Hey, this is Riker. Today we're going to be looking at an achromatic doublet, designing that together. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with uh, System Explorer open. If yours is not open, go ahead over here to the, to the Setup tab, click System Explorer. Alternatively, um, you can hover over this uh, and click on it. It is a little buggy and it will take longer for it to open. So the recommended way is to go to the Setup tab and hit System Explorer. Um, we'll see if this will even... There we go. Now it's open. Let's go ahead and set the aperture to 25 millimeters. And let's go ahead and go to our field of view. Let's add a field right here. Why not? And we'll put one degree into this. Close that. Let's go to Wavelengths. And uh, let's see what the settings are. Let's select this preset. And now we've got these three wavelengths, the FDC wavelengths. Okay, I think we're just about set to go. Now, we need to start sticking in some surfaces. You can either right click and insert or hit the insert key on your computer. And we're gonna go ahead and put in two surfaces and on the material column of the first row let's go ahead and put in nbk7 and then on row two let's go ahead and put in nf2 now these glasses are uh, described pretty well their characteristics you can look at them well first of all just by clicking on them and you can hit f4 on your keyboard and it'll open up the materials catalog and it'll show you that MBK7 has an index of refraction of 1.168 and an ABBE number of 64.167. Now if we go over to NF2 and hit F4, we can see it's got a higher index of refraction and a lower ABBE number. Now to, get, to create a good achromatic doublet, you want uh, those to be the, the inverse for each other. Another thing you can do is make this a model, and it tells you right here the index of refraction and the Abbey number, and then you can also make this one a model. Okay, so we can clearly see low index, high Abbey, high index, low Abbey, and that's what you want to make a nice, uh, realistic, achromatic doublet. Okay, so let's add some thickness here. Let's make NPK7 five millimeters and let's choose three millimeters for the NF2. Now let's go ahead to the Analyze tab and click Cross Section to see what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this window and pick it up and then go ahead and drag it to the right side of this little tile here in the middle and place it right there. And right now that's our achromatic doublet with the stop on the first surface where the fields of view are meeting and uh, the rays are diverging from there. So let's go ahead and put some optical power on NBK7. That's gonna be, let's choose a 100 millimeter um, radius of curvature. And for the second surface, let's make it negative 100. And then for this last surface, let's go ahead and make that um let's see negative let's do 300 just making some guesses here okay yep so our first element is a positive element and the second element is a negative element let's go ahead and do a marginal ray height solve with a zero height and zero pupil zone. So zero height specifies that's the height of the marginal ray and pupil zone being zero is the paraxial solution. So let's go ahead and update and check it out. We got light coming to a focus here. Let me just make sure we're showing all the wavelengths. So go to the settings and click all wavelengths. And let's go ahead and change the coloring by wavelength so that we can see things a little bit better. And we can see right here that um, our blue is focusing early, our orange a little bit later, and our red is focusing last. So this is not quite an achromatic doublet. It's doing pretty good though. So what we can do is let's go ahead and use the optimizer. So I'm gonna go and click on the optimize tab, click on merit function, 
Now, ZMAX has some nice default merit functions that you can use. There's a whole lot of settings here. Let's not uh, get into the details right now. Let's just click on Spot. And what this is going to do is create a selection of rays that it will trace through the lens and evaluate the spot size uh, at the detection plane. So let's hit Apply at the image plane. Okay, so I hit Apply. And we're going to go ahead and vary. Let's vary, first of all, this second surface to see if we can get some correction there. Looks like that was a good choice. All right, and that didn't change my focal length that much, which is what I was trying to avoid. Okay, so now we've got a pretty nice looking lens here. And let's go ahead and take a look at that focus. And if we look at it, uh, we can see that we've got blue and orange and red all focusing pretty well at the same place. Let's go to the Analyze tab and go to the Standard Spot Diagram. And we can see that we are focusing fairly well. Okay. Let's, um, let's go ahead and, and take this a step further. Let's go to the Aberrations button of the Analyze tab here under Image Quality. And we're going to look at Chromatic Focal Shift. Okay. So it tells us that our maximum focal shift range is 300 microns, but the diffraction limited range is only 115 microns. This is calculated by 2 times lambda times the f number squared um, at the uh, center wavelength, I believe. So if we had 2 times 0.587562 times our f number is listed down here, working f number of 6.98. And then we've got 57.25. Now that's plus or minus 2 times the lambda times the f number squared for a quarter wave of defocus. So the total range will be the 114.5 microns. And they get 114.6, probably from a difference in the number of decimals that they use. Okay. So we're not diffraction limited. Um, our application might not care about things being diffraction limited, but um, it's always uh, interesting to see if you can make things a little bit better. So let's go to our merit function here. Let's go ahead. We're not going to edit any of this stuff. This is just all the rays that ZMAX automatically populated that are tracing in the X and the Y directions. So um, we're going to hit insert, or again, you can also right click and insert, and go ahead and stick in a effective focal length. There's a lot of uh, four letter um, operand names here. There, ZMAX has just a ton of these and you can go into the user manual to read more about those. But right now we're just going to use EFFL, the effective focal length of the system at the primary wavelength, which was the wavelength 2. And our target, let's keep our wavelength, our effective focal length at 175 millimeters and give it a weight of 1. And when we click Update on this, it shows that we are not quite at 175. That's okay. Let's go ahead in here and let's make these guys variables. I'm in such a habit of making these variables by hitting Control Z that I didn't explain that's what I did earlier. If you didn't do that, uh, you can also go in here and click on this orange, this little uh, blue square, and click Variable. All right. So let's go ahead and vary all these parameters together to see if we can get anything better than what we currently have. Okay, that's looking well. This it's a little bit bigger actually. Let's let's set the scale back to what were we at? Forty microns. Okay. The, uh, the green wavelength is in pretty good focus. So let's look at our focal shift again. Hey, check it out. We're now down at 198 microns, still not quite making that diffraction limited. So this is where we can start accessing some more powerful features. Let's go ahead and change this solve type on MBK7 to substitute, and let's change it on NF2 to 
substitute. Um, just as a quick check, go to System Explorer over here, look at Materials Catalog. Make sure you've got the Shop Catalog there. If it isn't here, um, what you can do is you can scroll down until you find Shop, and you hit this little arrow up button, and there you go. Let's go ahead and close that out. And we're going to use a nice feature on ZMAX called um, Hammer Optimize. And oh my goodness, I don't even know if I, did I even hit this Optimize button for you guys? Man, that's all right. So you can hit Hammer. Um, I'm in the habit of doing Control-Shift-O for regular Optimize and Control-Shift-H for Hammer. So let's go ahead. I'll do this this way. Um, I've got eight cores eight threads that are accessible on this machine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to seven. And I always like to keep at least one core available. And let's start hammer optimizing. We very quickly shifted to other glass types. Um, these look like they're pretty exotic. I'm not going to worry about how realistic this is right now. 3D layout. Let's take a look. Looks like things really didn't change much in terms of shape, but these glass types um, appear to be better combinations for each other. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm curious what the index re of refraction is for these guys. And it looks like uh, we've got 1.57. So this is the low index. This is the high index. High Abbe, low Abbe. Uh, and this appears to be a better combination than MBK7 and NF2. If we look at our spot diagram, um, it looks like those are good combinations, not just for correcting um, your chromatic focal shift, but also for correcting astigmatism, uh, coma, and giving you just a little bit of astigmatism here in these spots. So if we look at our focal shift, we can see that, boom, we are now diffraction limited. Looks pretty good. And we even have a little bit of field of view on this thing with a stop only on the first surface. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you, and have a good day.